Now let's talk about creating your initial product backlog. So remember, we talked about this earlier. It's a single source of requirements. All the requirements are going to be in here. Everything we need to do to get this product out the door and hopefully bring in value. It's also constantly evolving. This is something that's going to be dynamic as markets change, as technology changes, as we learn new things about what we've developed so far. We'll constantly evolve that product backlog. Also, ordered based on value. Most valuable things at the top. Let's do the things that are going to bring in the most revenue or the things that are going to retain clients or make our customers the most happy and hopefully keep those customers or bring new ones in. Value. And we'll talk more about that later. And remember that the product backlog is estimated by the development team. The people who are actually going to be doing the work. Not the managers, not the product owner, not some outside expert, but the people actually doing the work. So what goes on your product backlog? Three main categories of things. You might have user requirements. New features and descriptions of features or enhancements that we want in the product. You can also include technical requirements. Things that we have to have infrastructure-wise or platforms we need to develop, you want to make sure to keep these as a minimum because they don't provide value to the end user. They provide internal value, but we have to make sure that we are concentrating on the end goal for the user and our clients. And also any bugs that we've had. We want to keep our bugs to a limit, and we'll talk about in the sprint how to limit our bugs as much as possible, but inevitably things will escape. We want to make sure that the product backlog is the single source of everything that needs to be done for this product. Technically, user requirements, and bugs as well.